The Shapley value is considered a fair way to divide the value of a game amongst its players. And I promise, the formula is not so scary. Okay, maybe at first glance, it is quite intimidating. But trust me, once you get under the hood, you'll find it actually has quite an intuitive explanation. Hi, I'm Connor, and welcome to ADO. Today, we're going to understand the mathematics behind Shapley values. To do this, we're going to start with a simple two-player game and slowly work our way up to the generalized formula. To understand why it's fair, we'll also discuss the axioms this formula is derived from. If you want to understand how this formula is applied to machine learning, then wait until the end of the video. I'll explain how you can get access to a Python SHAP course. There's also an article that goes along with this video. It might help you if you want to clarify some of the details we discuss here. You can find a link to it in the description. Let's get started. Suppose you and a friend enter a Kaggle contest. You end up winning the first prize of $10,000. We call this a coalition value. So the value of the coalition or team of player one and player two is $10,000. Now, you want, to, you want to split the money fairly. Your friend suggests that you simply split it equally. So you each get $5,000, but you are not happy with this. All the model training was done using your GPU. You believe you deserve a larger share. Conveniently, your friend owns a time machine. You both go back in time and redo the Kaggle contest alone. Please excuse these terrible animations. So this time, you end up coming second and make $7,500. Your friend only comes third and makes $5,000. Also, if none of you played, you wouldn't make any prize money. These are the coalition values. Looking at these, it's clear that you deserve more of the prize money. You did better by yourself. Or in other words, you contributed more to the coalition of two players. However, it's still not clear how we should divide up the prize money. One way to do it is to calculate the expected marginal contribution of each player. To do this, we start by calculating the marginal contributions of each player. These are the increases in prize money due to a player joining a coalition. Let's start with player one. They could join a coalition of only player two. In this case, the coalition would go from third place to first place and the prize money increases by $5,000. Player one could also join a coalition of no players and increase the prize money by $7,500. These are the marginal contributions of player one. To calculate the expected marginal contribution, we take the weighted average of these values. This gives us a value of $6,250. We can follow a similar process to calculate the expected marginal contribution of player two. In this case, we get a value of $3,750. Notice how the two values add up to the original prize money of $10,000. In fact, these two values are Shapley values. So in a game, the Shapley value of a player is the expected marginal contribution of that player, which is the weighted average of a player's contribution to all the coalitions that that player could join. The Shapley values are considered a fair way to divide the prize money. In the previous example, we glossed over what a weighted average is. To see how we calculate the weights, let's look at a three player game. We'd definitely be breaking a few time traveling rules to calculate all the coalition values. There are now eight possible coalitions. Together, all three players win first prize. If nobody played, you wouldn't win any money. There are three coalitions of two players. For example, a coalition of player one and player three would come second and win $7,500. There will also be three coalitions of one player. If player three played alone, they would not make any prize money. Perhaps they should have invested in a better GPU. We can use these to calculate the marginal contributions of player one. There are now four coalitions that player one could join. They could join a coalition of both player two 
and player three. They could join a coalition of only player two or only player three. They could also join a coalition of no players. Finally, we take the weighted average. This gives us a Shapley value of $5,000. So where do these weights come from? Well, they are the probabilities that player one makes those respective marginal contributions. By weighting by probabilities, we get an expected marginal contribution. It is not immediately obvious where these probabilities come from. Let's start with the first marginal contribution. To calculate the probability of this marginal contribution, we need to work out the probability that player one makes a marginal contribution to a coalition of player two and player three. To start, we need to work out the number of ways a coalition of three players can form. This is because the full prize money of $10,000 is only won when all three players work together. To do this, we assume each member joins the team sequentially with equal chance. For example, player one could join, then player two, then player three, or player one could join, then player three, then player two. In total, there are three factorial or six ways to form a coalition of three players. Now, all we need to do is count the number of ways player one can join a coalition of player two and three. Well, this can happen in two ways. Either player two joins, then player three, then player one, or player three joins, then player two, then player one. We can write this as two factorial times one factorial. So player one makes this marginal contribution two of the six ways that the coalition can form. This gives us a weight of two over six or one third. What about the second marginal contribution? Well, there's only one way for player one to make this contribution, which gives the weight of one over six. We can work out the remaining values in a similar way. We can use similar logic to calculate the weights in general. That's if we have a P player game and we want to work out the weight for the marginal contribution of player I to coalition S. Let's start with the denominator. The number of ways to form a coalition of P players is P factorial. S is the coalition. We use the absolute value notation to represent the number of players in the coalition. So absolute S factorial is the number of ways the coalition S can form. We also need to consider the number of players that must still join after player I has joined coalition S. We started with P players, we subtract the absolute S for the players already in the coalition, and we subtract one because player I has also joined. This gives us the weight. And what are we finding the weight of? Well, it's the value of the coalition including player I less the value excluding player I. This is the marginal contribution of player I to coalition S. The last thing we need to do is sum over all the possible coalitions that player I can join. And that's it. That's the Shapley value formula. This gives a fair value for player I in a P player game. Breaking down the Shapley value, you can see that it has an intuitive explanation. We are weighting all the marginal contributions of a player by the probabilities that they make those contributions. We then sum over all the possible coalitions that that player can make a marginal contribution to. This gives us an expected marginal contribution. The question is, why is this a fair way to divide value? Intuitively, it may seem like the expected marginal contribution is a fair way. We are considering all the possible coalitions that a player can join. This means we're considering the player's individual contributions as well as the interactions between players. The problem is there could also be other ways to divide value that also seem fair. We need to prove that the Shapley value is a fair way to do this. The Shapley value is actually derived from four axioms. The first is efficiency. This means that none of the game's value is left over. We saw this with the two player game where the individual Shapley values added up to the total prize money of $10,000. The second axiom is symmetry. 
two players are considered interchangeable if they make the same contributions to all coalitions. If two players are interchangeable, they must be given an equal share of the game's total value. Null player. If a player makes zero marginal contribution to all coalitions, then they get none of the total value. The last axiom is additivity. If we combine two games, then a player's overall contributions is the sum of the contributions for the two individual games. This axiom makes the assumption that any game played are independent. Together, these axioms can be considered a definition of fairness, and a method of dividing value that satisfies them can be considered fair. Lloyd Shapley defined these four axioms mathematically, and he proved that the Shapley value was the only value that satisfied all four of them. Personally, I think it's pretty amazing how we can go from these four simple axioms to such an intuitive formula. At this point, you may be asking, what does all this have to do with machine learning? Well, we can adapt the Shapley value formula to explain models. We go from dividing value of a game amongst its players to dividing a model's prediction amongst its features. If you want to see how this is done, then check out this first video. Otherwise, if you want to jump straight into applying the SHAP package, then check out the second video. You can also get access to my Python SHAP course for free by signing up to the newsletter in the description. This will equip you with the knowledge and skills needed to explain any machine learning model using SHAP.